welcome back to the Reality Bay podcast where we talk reality TV, pop culture, and hot topics. Just a reminder that what we talk about today is just for fun. Do not send any of these people hate. This episode is just my opinion and we are here to have some fun. So let's get into it. Today we are going to talk about The Real Housewives of Orange County, um, Season 17, Episode 1. We're going to talk about um, Summer House uh, Final Part 2 of their reunion, and then we're going to talk about Vanderpump Rules Part 3 of their reunion. Um, We're also going to talk about a couple of podcasts, um, mostly When Reality Hits um, with Jax and Brittany. They had Tom Schwartz on, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. But let's start today with The Real Housewives of um, Orange County. I really enjoyed this episode of Orange County. I was really excited to see Tamara back on my screen. She did come in a little hot. I'm like, this is so typical Tamara. Um, But I love Orange County because it's like, you know, it's like always sunny, it's fun, it's light. And after a really dark um, season of Vanderpump, I think this is going to be a great little fun show to watch, um, lighthearted, but also you know, there's going to be some drama. So we love that. Um, the episode starts with Tamara riding in on her motorcycle. She gets to her house in Ladera Ranch with Eddie. Um, Tamara says that she left in a bush and that's how, that's not how she wanted to go after 12 years, which I can't believe that was her last season. That seems like so long ago. Like from, that was like when Vicky and Steve had their like engagement party. Was that really her last season? That's insane. That was a good season, too. I also miss, you know, Vicky because she was so crazy. Was that also Vicky's? Yeah, that must have been Vicky's last season, too. Um, Her full, you know, not as a friend or anything like that, but just a full, her last full season. We kind of catch up with um, Eddie and Tamara. Her mom lives with them. Um, Tamara and um, Eddie say they closed um, Cut Fitness. They talk about Sandy, Tamara's mom's sex life, their sex life. They're very very sexual family. Um, but again, it was great to see her again. And then we start with Emily and Shannon. They meet for a hike. They bring their dogs. They talk about Tamara's, um, and Shannon's relationship. Shannon says that the downfall of their relationship was Tamara getting fired. I think Tamara was probably really jealous that Shannon got to stay and that she was fired. Shannon says that she reached out. Tamara says Shannon didn't. It's just a really back and forth between them, like who's telling the truth, who's lying. Um, But Tamara has gone on a bunch of podcasts and interviews talking about how her and Shannon aren't friends anymore. um, And I think that really hurt Shannon. Shannon probably felt like she didn't do anything wrong. I don't know. What do you guys think? Like, do you believe Tamara? Do you believe Shannon? I don't know. I kind of believe Shannon more just because I think that Tamara was really jealous that Shannon got to stay and Tamara felt like, oh, this is my show. Um, You know how they are about that. But um, yeah, that's kind of what I think. Also, can we talk briefly about how Emily drank out of the dog bowl? That is so gross. I, I can't. I mean... I'm glad they kept it in because I was just like, what? What? Super gross. The next scene is Gina taking her kids to the ortho. And then Emily is kind of going back and forth showing Gina and Emily being moms. Um, Emily's taking her kids through the drive-thru. They're talking about how happy they are that summer's almost over. They want their kids to go back to um, school. Um, (coughs) Gina says that her and her ex are in a really good place. That's, That's awesome. They're doing a lot of really quick scenes. I know this is the first episode, so they're kind of wanting to show everyone what everyone's doing. Um, We're back at Heather's house. Terry had knee surgery. She's bringing him up their elevator, which is crazy that they have an elevator. I guess not really, but kind of funny. As she gives Terry a foot massage, she talks about how Gina hasn't reached out to her or invited her anything. They show a little flashbacks of them. I think it was last season of them in New York and... um, Heather flying Gina on her private jet and showing them that they had a close um, friendship. Terry says it might be because people think that their events aren't fancy enough for Terry and Heather, which is such a weird thing to even say. Like, could you imagine saying that? Um, We're back at Tam with Tamara and Eddie. They go bowling with the newbie Jen and her boyfriend Ryan. From what I saw so far of the newbie Jen, I I really liked her. I think she seems like a great addition. She definitely seems more to have more of a personality than last season's Jen. Um, the doctor, if you guys remember her husband, um, Ryan. Um, so she seems like a little better, better fit. Um, 
in my opinion. Um, and then they also are going to have um, Taylor Armstrong, if you guys know her from Beverly Hills. She's going to be a friend of, and then also I guess Vicky will be back. I don't, I'm not sure at what point, but she does come back. I think it looks like she comes back for their group trip. So we'll get to see about that. Um, anyways, Jen talks about owning a yoga studio. She talks about how she's having an outside event and she's inviting all the women. Tamara and Eddie tell, tell them how they are closing Cut Fitness. I guess that's how um, Jen and her boyfriend Ryan met was at Cut Fitness. And then we're back with Gina. She calls Heather. Um, she says she has gifts for Max and Nikki, and she's asking if she can stop by. Um, Heather says that's great. Um, they She comes over. They chat outside. Um, Gina says how she's getting her real estate license. Heather talks about Gina, how Gina disappeared. Um, Gina comes up with a bunch of excuses. Um, I think Gina is probably just a flaky person. No offense. Um, and also, it's like they're not filming, so they're not like – when you're not filming, you're not, like, trying to, like, hang out all the time. Now they're filming. Now she's back. So, I mean, I'm sure that has something to do with it, too. Gina says that she doesn't think to invite Heather to things because it's not fabulous and uh, not a fabulous enough thing, um, which is what Terry said before. And then they go back inside, do whatever, hanging out. Looks like they're fine now. Um, we are back at Jen's house. She has five kids. Her youngest is adopted. She's got a bunch of animals, um, some cats, some dogs, some guinea pigs, it looks like. Um, we get into a little bit more of Jen's um, background and what her deal is. Um, Jen's ex-husband says um, stays at her house when, the, when he's in town, and Jen stays with her boyfriend at his house. And she was like, I know that's so weird, but I feel like a lot of people do that. Like, didn't we just see when Gina and her husband were getting a divorce they did that and um Gina stayed in that casita or whatever <laughs> so I don't think it's that weird I actually think that's really nice um to do for your kids um Jen explains that her ex-husband lives in Oklahoma and works for her family's business Jen also gets more into her life at the yoga event um so we'll talk about that when it gets there we get to know her a little bit better Gina, Heather, and Tamara play pickleball. Um, when Tamara arrives, Gina makes a comment in her talking head that Tamara doesn't make her feel bad if she doesn't text back or not, um, which I'm wondering does maybe if um, Heather and Gina get back into it later in the season for her to make that comment because it looks like they had just made up, but then Gina made that comment, so I wonder what's going on there. They play pickleball, they sit down, have some champs and some lunch. Um, Tamara says she doesn't want to fight with Shannon, but she has some things she wants to talk to her about. That's another very fast um, scene. There's a lot of fast scenes in this. Um, it was a really quick episode. We are now back with um, Jen's outside event. All the girls arrive. Um, they do some yoga. Emily and Tamara have a moment and realize that they are more similar than they realize. I think they probably are going to become friends this season because she did make a comment on Watch What Happens Live on Wednesday night with Lala Kent um, saying that they seemed like they had like mend um, a friendship. I know they had some uh, problems in the past, so I bet you they become better friends, and I think that's this episode. Uh, scene was foreshadowing that after yoga they go up to um, have some drinks and some snacks um, Jen opens up about her family and getting divorced and how she left her husband and how mad her family was at her um, in a talking head Emily says that she heard Jennifer was not faithful to her husband she said that Gina had told her this so I'm sure we'll get more into that we'll see um Heather, I mean, not Heather, sorry, Gina and Emily are always, like, so, like, talking about people's, like, faithfulness, like, off, and I don't know, it's kind of interesting. Emily, Tamara, and um, Gina are talking about um, Tamara and Shannon's relationship. Um, when Shannon walks up, they all get super awkward. Shannon doesn't even care. Shannon is such, I love her so much. She's one of my favorite housewives. Don't come for me. Um... But I love her, and um, she's just like, are you guys talking about me? Like, super up front. She's like, whatever. Um, they all, like, Emily and Gina leave, and then Tamara's there, and they're t they kind of have a weird conversation. Um, Tamara tells Shannon that she misses her, her best friend. She tells her that Bronx died, their dog, and that they're closing down Cut Fitness. Um, Tamara kind of 
tears up a little bit, which I'm like, why are you, if you miss her so much and all this stuff, why are you being so hard on her, like, talking about her behind her back and all these things? It's just, I don't know, it's so weird. Like, once Tamara gets in front of people, then all of a sudden she starts to break down, but before she acts like she's so tough and, like, she's in the right and stuff, I don't know, it's just kind of strange to me. Um, Shannon says that she misses her but and doesn't want hardships with anyone. Um, Shannon asks Tamara to talk it out. Um, and then in the preview of next week, it shows Tamara and, um, Shannon having a sit down, which it doesn't look like it goes well, but I do know that they're friends now, so it must eventually go well. I don't know at what point in the season that happens, but looks like it does happen. So we'll get, we'll get to see that. And I love Shannon and Tamara's sit down. They are always so like mean. <laughs> so we'll talk about that next week. We'll see what happens. That's the end of, um, the episode of Orange County. Again, very excited to have it back on my screen. I'm very excited to see what happens. I love it. It's lighthearted. It's fun. So we'll talk about that next week as well. Next, we're going to get into the Summer House Part 2 reunion. Okay, so the last part of the Summer House reunion, it was only two parts. I thought this episode was a little underwhelming. I don't know. I didn't love it. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I did like that Carl kind of opened up a little bit more about his addiction in some in some parts um, and stuff like that, but it's just like that all Lindsay Danielle ball. I don't know. I'm just over it. I'm hoping next season is way better than this. I used to really love Summer House. This season just did not do it for me. Um, we start that we start with um, Lindsay and Paige going after each other. Andy asks Amanda if she's ever had a problem with Carl and Lindsay um, dating. Amanda says no, and they will figure out their journey. Lindsay and Carl say thank you. Um, I think, you know, Lindsay also says this um, at one point, I think, during a break that, you know, the only relationships that she cares about are hers with Carl, Kyle, Amanda, and Danielle. Those are the people that she's known the longest, and the other people, she doesn't, that's not her priority. And I do think that that's important because, like, Sierra Page and, like, Maya are, like, saying things to her, coming after her, and she's just not even, like, Lindsay's, like, so unfazed, she's not even saying anything back to them. Like, she's just, like, does not care, which I commend her for because I would have been, like, screaming at them. <laughs> Andy asks about Carl and Kyle's relationship. Um, they say that the work stuff was challenging. It seems like they're in a better place now. Um, Carl explains that he was venting to Lindsay about work, um, and Lindsay was not in his ear talking shit. Um, it seems like Amanda was, um, you know, kind of on her side about that, you know, um, he, she was trying to explain to Kyle that he, Lindsay's only hearing what Carl is telling them. And, you know, you vent to your partners about work and everything else. Like, Lindsay doesn't know what it's like to work there. Car she just knows what Carl is telling her, and Carl is, you know, feeling underappreciated. They then address Kyle talking about Carl's drug use at work. Carl says what Kyle said was true, but um, Carl would have been... Um, the one to like to have told everyone that and it was hard for Carl um, to hear that Kyle is ashamed and embarrassed of telling everyone that um, Carl starts to cry Carl apologizes to everyone because he knows everyone sitting there has had to see him at his worst um, he tells everyone that he um, appreciates them Carl also really appreciated Danielle in that moment defending him um, he says he reached out to Danielle to tell her that how much that meant to him. And then Andy says something really beautiful that I really liked. Um, he says that he's learned um, from friends who have addictive problems is that the shame that they carry is much greater than the anger that they have for them, um, and no one is feeling the shame more than them. And I really liked that because I think that, um, you know, you can be mad at an addict for all the things that they have done, but you have to remember that they are feeling that much greater and that we should have compassion for them. Carl then tells a story about season one, how he was drinking in his interview chair um, during his talking head. Um, he speaks about his brother's addiction, and his brother was so excited to see Carl on TV. He turns the TV on. He watches Carl talking about him, um, and that really threw a wrench in their relationship. Um, and then Carl's brother passed away, and Carl never got to speak to him about that. And I thought that was really, really upsetting and sad to know that, you know, that guilt that you carry, that's really, really sad, and I feel for Carl so much for that. We then have um, Corey join the cast. Um, we talk about Sam and Corey's relationship. 
we talk about Paige and Craig's relationship a little bit, nothing really, just talk about, you know, him asking her to, you know, wanting to get engaged in the moving and all of that. Um, we then talk about Oliver and Maya's relationship. And in regards to the cheating, Maya didn't know the extent um, when they were filming, but she found out recently that it was 11 women. Um, I'm kind of sad that we didn't get to talk about her trying to hide this from the cameras. I don't know, that really bothered me, and, and then it was never addressed. So I'm just like, I want to know like why she did that and how that's not self-producing, but Lindsay is self-producing. I really wish we got answers on that. They then get into Danielle and Robert's split. Um, Danielle thinks they broke up because she wanted to see him more and he was not willing to work on it. He was just wanted to go to work. Um, Andy asks if Danielle was projecting her relationship issues on Carl and Lindsay. Danielle says not at all. Lindsay believes it was partly um, projecting. Carl says he talked to Robert and Robert said him and Danielle were fine over the summer. So that I guess that confirms that it wasn't projecting. But I also believe that when you are projecting, you don't know you're projecting. So how would she know that she was projecting her relationship insecurities on Carl and Lindsay? That's my opinion. Carl and Lindsay both say that they didn't reach out to Danielle after they heard about her and Robert's breakup, which I was like, Ugh, they probably should have. Um, Lindsay especially. I mean, Carl too. She, he is really good friends with Danielle as well. But just as like a girlfriend, um, you probably she Lindsay probably should have reached out. I mean, that's kind of sad. Danielle then asks Lindsay if all the problems they had about Danielle saying things about their relationship, um, Carl and Lindsay's relationship, was it because it came from Paige? Um, which Danielle knows is not a good idea. She shouldn't have told Paige anything, not one thing about you know speaking ill will towards Lindsay on that. She knows Paige would have gone and told Lindsay. She should have realized that. I'm sorry, but she should have. Lindsay says that she would have been upset if it was anyone. Um, Carl says he didn't mean to hurt Danielle about the engagement, but they bring up how Danielle screamed into a pillow when he told her that he was ring shopping. Carl says, um, but you didn't say you wanted to help or anything, which I do get. Like he told her I'm ring shopping and she made no like initiative to say, okay, are you, when are you get proposing? What's happening? What's the deal? nothing of that sort so I do see Carl's point of view in that um in that part Carl pol apologizes again to Danielle for not involving her um he said it's you know it's just a, it was about them and then Danielle says you just didn't care enough about me which I'm like Danielle why'd you say that like come on girl like it's not about you you know this how many times I got to tell you that Danielle apologizes for the engagement party um and she would have liked to been involved mm -hmm. Um, Danielle says that she doesn't regret anything in that final conversation. Um, Lindsay says that she doesn't either. And that's because, um, Lindsay is still hurt about what Danielle said, um, about her all summer. Kyle chimes in, in and says that he wishes that, um, Lindsay would have apologized for being so cold in that conversation. Lindsay says that, um, Danielle ruined their engagement, so that's why she was acting so cold. They all say that Danielle just apologized. Um, Andy says that he thinks they are fighting because they care about each other so much. Um, Danielle says that her problem was never has never been with their relationship. Um, I think that what she was trying to say is that it's between Danielle and Lindsay, and how Lindsay treated Danielle doesn't have like she doesn't have any problems with Carl and Lindsay being in a relationship. And then at the end of the episode, they show a text from Carl showing them all out to eat and Danielle is there. So that's nice. I do kind of think that I'm not sure how next season will be in regards to casting, but I do think that Danielle and Lindsay will probably be able to mend their relationship. I'm really hoping um, they seemed like such good friends and it seems like a, like something that they would be able to move past. So I guess we will see what happens. I do think that Carl and Lindsay will be back for next season. Uh, summer because I think that they will want to film their um, their wedding and you know they said their wedding was in November going to be in November in Mexico or something like that so you know the season will start this summer and then they'll probably show at the very end of the season um, Carl and Lindsay's wedding that's just my um, prediction I do kind of wonder like who else is going to be back I kind of wonder about I, I kind of don't think Maya will be back 
Sierra and Paige are questionable. Danielle, I'm kind of thinking no. Um, Corey, I think Corey and Sam will be back. Yeah, I hope Gabby is back. I really liked her. Chris, I don't know. I, I feel like a lot of the um, new guys, single guys, don't stay like that guy, Alex. I think that was last season. Um, they could always bring Andrea back, <laughs> but he's in a relationship now, so I kind of think probably not. So I guess we'll see. Um, that wraps up our season for Summer House. I'm excited to see what happens next season. All right, now we are going to get into Vanderpump Rules Reunion Part 3. I had got to tell you, I was like, I rewatched this episode, obviously, a couple of times. And the last time that I was going to watch it to take my notes, I was really like, oh, I don't want to. Like, it was really dark. And like, after I watched um, Orange County, I was like, I'm really excited to put this season to bed and not think or talk about it anymore. Because I'm just like, this is a really sad, dark season. And I feel like kind of no one wins in this in this season. Like, I mean, obviously some people win and some people lose, but I'm just saying like, it just was sad all around and it made me feel icky inside and I'm glad that it's going to be over and I'm glad that we're going to have a little bit more funner, um, seasons of other things that not so dark, like housewives. I felt like housewives is just a little bit lighter because it's just like girlfriend relationships, friendships. It's not so much like, I don't know that relationships, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, whatever, those get dark. So I, I'm happy to put this to bed and I was really dreading taking notes on this episode and all of that. So let's get into it. We start the ops, um, episode off with Raquel entering the group. Sheena is in her trailer a hundred yards away. My heart was beating so hard when um, she walked in. I couldn't imagine the tension in that room. It was probably so uncomfortable. And could you imagine being Andy Cohen? Like you're just like you have nothing to do with the, these. Like he has nothing to do with this. Like these relationships. He didn't do anything. He wasn't there. And now he just has to mediate it. Oh, oh my God. I was really feeling for him because his his facial expressions were something else. Raquel sits down. Andy ha asks how she's doing. She says she's embarrassed. We start, um, we kind of start off with talking about the girl's trip to Havasu. Um, Andy asks Katie why she um, invited Raquel but didn't invite Sheena when Raquel was the one trying to hook up with, hook up with um, Schwartz. Um, I think it's probably because she has a, you know, she's known Sheena longer and that probably hurt her a little bit more than Raquel. She doesn't know Raquel. Um, Katie says that she was just trying to have a fun single summer. She knows that, you know, James and her broke up. She was feeling like she was in the same situation and she wanted to, you know, mend fences a little bit with Raquel. That didn't go over well. Um, Raquel said that she felt so uncomfortable on that trip. Um, Raquel says that they all bashed her at that dinner. Lala and Katie explained that they were talking about a comment that Raquel made. That comment being... Um, good thing you don't have a man to have around <laughs> to Lala that night at, in Vegas after Oliver. Raquel explains that she was so drunk that night and that's why she made that comment um, and she was surprised how drunk she got. Raquel says she's been selfish about everything. Ariana says that that doesn't cut it. This is when she makes her comment about subhuman, diabolical, disgusting, blah, blah, blah. Raquel says that she thinks that her actions were actually hum human, which the cast goes crazy about tom lala and james get into a fuck you scream they're all yelling fuck you at each other at the same exact time literally they're all sc three screaming that at each other um tom says that they were not fucking because people kept saying you know you guys were fucking at this time blah 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 um tom's adamant that it was only one time that they had sex um they talk about raquel asking ariana about her sex life raquel said that she was coming to her honestly asking her out of concern Come on, Raquel. No, you were not. You were trying to get some information. Like, just be real. Just, I don't know. I guess there's no really good way to put that. Like, well, I was really just wondering, like, how, like, what was she going to say? I guess. I don't know. It's just it's like, come on. It's so obvious. And you guys are so, like, you guys are flaunting it so hard this season. And then now all of a sudden you're like, mm -hmm, ashamed. And like, all this, I don't know. It's just weird. Raquel said that Lala and James can't talk because they had they slept together while James was with, with Raquel. Tom says it was only once. Again, he just keeps saying this. It was only once. It was only once throughout this whole episode. And it's just like, come on, Tom, just stop talking. 
Raquel says that Lala called herself a mit- mistress that night at Lala's birthday when Raquel came to her um, and asked to talk. Um, and then they flash back to that that exact scene. And it's funny because Lala is saying, yeah, I've been called a mistress. I've been called a homewrecker and all this stuff. And then Raquel was like, yeah, she called herself a mistress. It's like, come on, Raquel. Like, do you not understand like what's going on ever? Like, come on, girl. Lisa says that she had no reason not to um, believe Oliver. Um, he was a great employee and all this stuff. Um, Lala says that she's now friends with Oliver's ex. Um, Tom claims that Lala knew before and wanted to make Raquel make uh, Raquel look stupid. Which I'm like, did are they trying to say that she knew before Raquel hooked up with him? Or are they saying that she had just found out before um, Oliver's wife messaged Raquel and told her what was going on. I couldn't really figure that out. Now, and now I'm like really curious. Did she, Lala know before? And that's why she didn't hook up with Oliver. I mean, I don't know. That seems so strange. I don't know. I feel like, I feel like she would definitely have said, some, I don't know. I don't know. That's really, really strange to me. Andy then brings up um, Katie's mom talking to Raquel that night in Las Vegas and asks how she could have have gone make made out with Schwartz after Terry had talked to her and why she would even want to hook up with Schwartz after her being with um Tom Raquel says that she had put a cap on her and Tom and um and was curious about Schwartz so she wanted to see what it was like um but Raquel claims that Schwartz instigated it in Mexico but I don't know about that I kind of feel like Raquel was instigating it if you watch back but I don't know I also I, my, this is what I think happened. My opinion is that Schwartz didn't know up until that point in Mexico. I think he then hooked up with Raquel for funds. And then I think that Tom maybe had told her, told him, sorry, Hey, this is what's going on. Because if you watch Tom Schwartz the day after they hook up and how he acts towards Raquel, completely different. He gives her a high five. So I'm just like, does, did Sandoval then tell him? Because I don't think he was the decoy. I think that, like, they, I think either Raquel was trying to make Tom Sandoval jealous or they were trying to, Tom and Raquel, Sandoval and Raquel were trying to, like, you know, make other people, like, think not about them. Think about, oh, let's make them think about Raquel and Schwartz. That's just my opinion. I don't know. Raquel then makes a comment um, saying that Lala doesn't like her and never liked Raquel because Lala loved the attention James gave her. And then once Raquel came into the picture, that was over. Lala says, of course not. That's not the case. Blah, blah, blah. They talk about the Abbey. Tom says that they weren't the only ones there, that James um, and Allie and his dad and everyone was there. But Allie's in the trailer with Sheena and she's saying, no, that's not the case. She says that when they got there, um, her James and James's dad they were there Raquel and Tom were there alone James also says it says this while James is on stage with everyone the whole cast I still think it's so interesting that they're so blatantly lying um, about this when it's like how can you lie when the people that you're claiming were there with you were like they walked in on you you guys together it's so strange to me they then talk about the open relationship thing at the at Coachella and the jacuzzi, all that, blah, blah, blah. Um, Raquel says that she never said that. Um, Andy asks if he felt he got caught at the Abbey. Tom says no because he wasn't doing anything. Tom makes the weirdest comment. He says, I have friends um, that I've had sex with while I'm single and it's not weird after. Katie says, yes, but that's when you're single. Like, why would you make that comment? Like, no, it's not weird. I've had sex with people and then I hang out with them and it's not weird. Yeah, but you're also in a relationship for 10 years. Like, what are you talking about? Andy asks Raquel if he if she thought about skipping the reunion. Um, Raquel says yes. Um, she goes into an apology to Ariana. Raquel said that she um, did it because she felt seen and heard by Tom. Um, and she says she's never confided in Ariana, so it was different. Um, Raquel says that she um, couldn't stop it because it was impossible to turn away from. Raquel says that she was in love and is still in love. They ask Tom um, if he's in love. Um, after a very long pause, he says yes. Um, Ariana is disgusted by them. They then get into um, Raquel calling Lala a mistress bimbo and how hypocritical that was. 
Tom asks for the definition of mistress. He's like, isn't that an ongoing thing? It's like, Tom, just stop talking. Like, what are you doing? Lala says it's insane because she was sleeping with Tom at that point and she was just calling. Like, how could you call someone that when you're doing it? It's, it blows my mind so much. Um, Andy asks about the jacuzzi if they slept together that night. Um, Sandoval says no. We know later that that's a lie because in Raquel's confessional at the very end of the episode, she tells the truth about all that. They talk about how Tom dressed up as Raquel for Halloween. That is so weird, creepy, not cool. Again, flaunting it in everyone's faces and now they're feeling ashamed and all of this stuff. I don't know. It's just like ugh, not a good look. Ariana confirms that her eggs are not fertilized with Tom. So that's good. I know a lot of people were worried about that, but she confirms that. Andy asks if Tom has slept with anyone since Raquel. Um, Ariana says, yes, uh, me. Tom sarcastically says, yeah, it was so hot she kept her t-shirt on. Everyone yells at him that he's disgusting. Um, Lala calls him a dick and an asshole. Which, this comment, like, really, like, disgusted me. Like, it's like, first of all, first she doesn't have sex with him at all. Now it's not hot enough for him. Like, come on, Tom. Like, this is so gross and so, so beyond gross. The grossest comment I've ever heard come out of a man's voice. It's so bad. Raquel explains um, the name change from Rachel to Raquel. She said there's a lot of Rachels in her class, blah, blah, blah. So we get a little background on that. Um, Tom says he told his mom and that she was saying that this isn't good. Um... Andy asks us if, if he took Raquel home to St. Louis. He says no. We know now. We now know that that's a lie because of again Raquel's confessional at the very end of the episode. She comes clean on all of that. It's now for um, the time for Raquel to leave, so she walks off. Um, Tom follows her. They chat a little bit. Tom says how uh, good Raquel did. He did way better than her. Lisa talks to Tom in like the little side room before you know they're not on stage at this point um he says that he wishes that he could have a real conversation with ariana um lisa you know is kind of trying to tell him you don't have to have that right now in front of everyone you can have that in private unfortunately i think ariana's just too angry now and it's just not it's not going to be a thing that tom wants it to be she just seems like way too angry to even have a normal conversation maybe now but again, I don't think she's going to give him the time of day now. All right, it's the end of the episode. Sheena comes back. They all take a picture. They say their goodbyes. They, um, you know, chat about their last things, you know, before they go. Um, Sheena having a baby. What if Shorts is going to get married? Katie going to get married? Blah, 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 blah. And then um, it is now time for Raquel's sit down. They say this is six days later after they filmed the reunion. Raquel says that she wants to tell the truth now. Um, you hear a producer in the background um, asking her some questions. Raquel says that the worst is out there, um, but she's having to still lie about the timeline, which this means Tom is making her, not making her, asking her to lie about the timeline. Raquel says that Tom says that this will be less hurtful um, and that that's why he's trying to hide the timeline, which I do not think is true. I think that he is trying to save his image. And it has nothing to do about what he thinks is hurtful or not. He just doesn't want to look like the bad guy. She claims that the second time they hooked up was in Mexico during Sheena's wedding. So I guess the first time was guys night. And then the second time it was in Mexico during Sheena's wedding. She says that they hooked up multiple times in Mexico. She says that it picked up speed after filming. Um, she met Tom's mom. Um, and her, his mom was aware that the, what was going on. Um, he, they asked has she ever been to St. Louis to his parents' house? Um, she's like, no, I can't recall. Then they show a picture of them in St. Louis um, and in December, and then she finally comes clean and says, yes, okay, we did, whatever. Um, she says it ha ate her alive not to tell Ariana. Um, Raquel al also asks Tom, oh, can we have a, can we do a thruple? Do you think Ariana would be into doing a thruple? Tom's like, absolutely not. She's not going to be into that. Um, she says, um, Tom asked her not to, um, disclose all of this. Um, Tom's all she has. She's isolated. These are like very, very strong words that she is saying. And it's a little scary, like how much Tom looks like Tom manipulated her. 
She then comes clean about um, her and Tom hooking up while Ariana is away for her grandmother's funeral. She says that this is the one thing that Tom did not want her to tell, and she is telling it because she, he knows how bad he will look that they slept together in her house while she's away at her grandma's funeral. So sad, so gross. She says that this has killed her soul. She's crying now. This is the first emotion that we've seen of Raquel, so this is kind of a big moment that, wow, she actually, does she feel remorse, or is it that, you know, is she scared of Tom? Like, what's going on? And now she's alone. It's like a hostage person. Oh, now they're alone. I, now I can escape. It's really, really, really weird. And, you know, I did see on Instagram, oh, she, after she gets out of her mental facility, that she is going to be doing a sit-down interview. I don't know. I guess we'll see. I can totally see her doing that because she's going to want to, like, have some redemption. But I guess we'll see. I definitely will be watching that because I want to know. But this is, like, really sad and weird. And, you know, a lot of people are like, wow, this is not a huge bombshell, but I did think it was interesting hearing it from her and kind of sh really showing how manipulated she was by Tom. And I'm not saying that it wasn't Raquel's fault. She was a participant, but it was really sad. And it, th this whole episode was just sad all around. I'm glad that we can finally put it to bed and this season is over. We do have a secrets revealed next week. I hope that's not too crazy, but I guess we'll see. Okay, and then finally, I wanted to talk about a couple of podcasts. I have just have like a couple of things to say about Lala's podcast. And then um, Schwartz was on When Reality Hits with Brittany and Jax. And he did talk a little bit about his relationship with Sandoval and all that. So let's get into it. Um, on the Give, Her, Give Them Lala podcast, all she said was that um, she thinks Raquel will come back. And she's heard that they are in communication. Um, her Raquel and the producers are in communication. So I don't know. I guess we'll see about that. And then... Um, Schwartz on the podcast, um, Schwartz said a couple of interesting things. He says, Schwartz says that, um, Tom's actions are indefensible. He needs to lose the ego. Um, and he can just say he's sorry and not, I'm sorry, but which, you know, Sandoval is famous for saying, um, he was saying that his dad had hit his head, had a brain bleed, 5% chance of living. One of his, um, brothers had cancer. One, of, another one was in rehab and he was all trying to open the bar, bar over budget, losing money while this was all happening with Sandoval. So I feel really bad for Schwartz, kind of. I know, oh my God, people are going to get so mad at me for saying that. Um, I do feel bad for him. He's like, he kept saying, you know, my world doesn't revolve around Sandoval. And I know people are like, yes, it does. But I do believe like he had other things going on and he wasn't like solely focusing on what Sandoval was doing. Like he clearly had a lot of other things going on. Um, Sandoval was giving um, giving this completely different narrative about how Ariana treats him like shit and belittles him. And again, you have a friend who's telling you what's going on in their relationship. You're gonna believe them. You're not not you're not gonna not believe them. So mm, I don't know. Short says that he feels used. Um, he trusted what Sandoval was saying, but now he's heard Ariana's side that he feels differently. He did talk about Big Bear. Short says. Um, Another example of how Sandoval was extremely selfish, he said Sandoval put a lot of his friends in extremely uncomfortable situations. Um, they had this Big Bear trip planned for a long time. Short says that he barely saw Raquel on that trip. So it kind of sounds like um, Sandoval had invited Raquel, but then Joe was there, so it's like, uh, I don't know, kind of weird. Um, invited her, and Schwartz didn't know. Um, and then during the reunion, you can also hear Schwartz begging Sandoval to help him explain Big, Bo Big Bear you know, saying that he didn't know and all this stuff because people are accusing him of all these things and Sandoval says nothing. And I think that's really telling. Um, Short says that he's taking a break from Sandoval. He hasn't really talked to her, him. Um, Brittany also said that Sandoval texted him about him playing in Kentucky and was like, oh, do you want me to get you tickets? Um, Brittany was like, um, no, I, I don't even, she probably didn't respond, but in the podcast she was saying, why would he text me? Like, this is weird. And then they ask him, um, if he knows if Tom and Raquel are together. Schwartz has no idea about Tom and Raquel's relationship status, which I think is telling too, because it sounds like he has not talked to Sandoval at all. And I hope he steps away from this friendship because it doesn't seem healthy for him. And I think he needs to prioritize himself and really figure out, you know, like he went down in the ship with all of this and he, I mean, and he didn't do anything. I mean, I know people are saying he should have said something to Ariana and all this stuff, but Again, he had other things going on and it's not his life and what was he really supposed to do? This is his friend and business partner and I think he 
was um, in between a rock and a hard place. Again, everything, this is all just my opinion. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters. So don't come for me and don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. And that is the end of today's episode. Thank you guys so much for joining me. We had a great time. Next week, I mean, Vanderpump Rules is over, so I guess we'll see what the secrets revealed. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about that if it's juicy. We'll talk about um, Orange County. Um, Bachelorette starts soon. Um, Summer House is over now, so we won't be talking about that. Um, we'll maybe talk about the Kardashians. I haven't watched the last episode, so maybe we'll talk a little about bit about that and we'll see what else goes on i know a lot can happen in a week so we'll see thank you guys so much for joining me and have a great rest of your week